your favorite teacher, your favorite YouTube tutorial person, uh, me, uh, we all just became obsolete overnight. <laughs> no, not not really at all, actually. But uh, Chat GPT, super cool piece of technology. I'm Jordan Needham. This is Jham 3D, and let's talk about it a little bit. So Chat GPT is super powerful in many ways that are actually really helpful. Now I have been very critical of AI art just because I, you know, check the backlog on the channel. I don't really want to talk about it right now. We don't have time for that. Chat GPT, on the other hand, really seems like a great AI assistant for everything. Uh, that's what it's becoming anyways. And it feels like for me that it's the first time that I've interacted with a piece of AI technology where I felt, I felt like it, it is possible to have a general AI that is actually very, very helpful for almost everything. Our first interaction with this sort of technology was probably something like Siri, where it's like supposed to be a general assistant, but it's notoriously stupid. Whereas chat GPT, it feels like it's very, very smart. Like it sources things really well, spits it out really fast. You can use it to do all types of things and the limits seem limitless, <laughs> but uh, it's not quite. And we'll get into that. As you can see on the screen, actually, it does say right here, uh, some of the limitations are that it may generate incorrect information, may occasionally produce harmful instructions or bias content, and then limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. Interesting. How how are we going to use this? Okay, because, you know, we're getting a lot of Terminator vibes. Uh, people are really scared shitless over chat GPT. I think there's obviously some concerns that this raises. However, uh, for me as an independent artist, it gets me really excited because now we can use AI to do almost anything, not really almost anything, but you can see how it's going to be that way in the future. We can use it to do all the things we don't want to do, piece everything together, and then make a coherent story with our own creative input. We can use this to do the more mundane task, whereas AI art for me, that's like, it's doing all the tasks I want to do. That's just, that it's so pointless for me. But this, however, uh, let's take this for example. I'm asking it now to generate a countdown timer inside of After Effects, and it's gonna take some time to think here, but here we go. Ooh, actually this is the wrong thing, and I'll get to this in a second. Here we have steps that it generated to show us how we could ourselves follow these steps and generate a countdown timer inside of after effects now what exactly is it going to look like i don't know i'm not going to do these steps right now uh, but it obviously there's a lot of creative decisions specific styles that you want to make when you're doing this thing so is it going to get it to the final thing maybe not is probably not exactly the countdown timer you want for example it made sort of its own stylization decisions by telling you to add a glow effect to your countdown timer which you definitely don't need to do like it's not a critical step towards making the countdown expression. Maybe you want to do it because it does look cool, but again, you don't need to. Here's another thing. This would be a good tutorial per se. Like you want to really learn the steps of, of, of After Effects. That's really cool. And you could do this sort of thing for Blender too. I'll show you how to generate a procedural rustic metal material in Blender. Yeah, so you can see it starts laying out more steps uh, just like it was doing for After Effects. And this is really, really cool to me because there are really specific things in Blender that I've had to look up before that I had to scour the depths of the internet on Reddit on 2003 Blender forms, stuff like that. I just couldn't find the real answer towards, but I feel like this is genius because it's going to give you an answer. It's going to source kind of all of those things and give you an answer on how to do a very specific thing. Uh, but how, good is it? How good will this material be? I don't know exactly. We're going to get to that in a second, but just as a brief overview, I can tell as a Blender artist, three over three years experience using it, this does look about right. I mean, we're seeing a lot of words here where it looks like, yeah, that's actually, yeah, no, this, this does look pretty good. And so if you're a beginner, I mean, this might be really helpful to just have it all like right in front of you instead of having to go to, you know, a hundred different tabs and look on uh, 17 different 
Reddit forms or whatever to get a specific answer. This has like one interface and you can ask all these questions in order, keep referencing them. That's really cool to me. Okay, so tutorials, that's really cool. But how, how about a step further? Can we ask it to, let's do generate countdown timer code for After Effects. And this is a next level. This is like, this is insane. This is so cool. And it even shows you like instructions for what's going on, which is really cool to me because, you know, as someone that's not huge in code, uh, I've done some very basic expressions before actually doing a countdown timer and after effects is something I've done before. So I have a brief understanding the basics of code, maybe very basic, very, very, very basic, but it's really cool that it shows you like, you know, what's, what these steps are doing. Like this is the direct duration of your countdown timer. This is the number starting number. It's obvious. Like if you wanted to change these, I don't know, you can't do it here, but if you were to copy and paste this into your after effects, then yeah, you could change these and you would know what these different values or variables are, which is really cool. And now again, how accurate is this stuff though? We did see on the front page may occasionally generate incorrect information, which is funny. How reliable is this information? Can we actually do this and trust that it's going to work every time? Uh, not quite. Now here, I'll show you some. Let's ask it to make a tree generator for Blender. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this in a Blender. This is our tree, okay. All right, I like what we're working with, good. So obviously if you're a 3D artist, if you're a Blender artist, you probably caught that my prompt was pretty vague for chat GPT. I said, generate a code for a tree generator in Blender. And then of course we ended up with this laughable result. Now, aside from the fact that it's, this is not my idea of what a tree looks like, I intentionally made the prompt vague for a reason, vague. I, I hate that word. I'm sorry. The more I say it, it's weird to me. I wanted to display the fact that the more specific you want to get, the more complicated and specific you want to get, the more AI is going to struggle because it's going to be left up to further interpretation. That of course is how AI art generators work as well. And you can kind of play with sliders actually to how strictly do you want it to stick to the prompt? But when it's something like this, where the prompt is very, very open to interpretation, the results are going to be all over the place. And so you could sit here forever, just asking it to generate new things. It's probably better that you go in there and do it specifically exactly the way that you want to do it. Although this could be good for maybe a base in the future. Uh, but as we get towards stylization, it's not going to get it 100%, at least not yet. Here's the thing. If you want it to get really, really stylized, I can just see that there's so many more creative decisions that you're probably going to want to change them anyways. So that's why this doesn't scare me too much. And now can we get to why this tree looks this way? I want to be clear. I copied and pasted exactly the code that it laid out for me. I pasted that into Python console inside of Blender. Those are the results I got. Now I saw like five errors. Uh, there were material errors. There were like uh, modifier errors and stuff. Maybe if I could code, I could have fixed those, but I really don't think it's worth the time because my whole point was just showing it's not quite as easy as just, Hey, make this for me, copy and paste. And you get exactly that every time. No, you still have to know what you're doing. And I think to understand that I want to briefly explain very basic understanding of this technology. Don't approach it as if it's like the all knowing God, like the AI God that knows everything. Now, the reason I say that is because I want you to approach this a lot differently than maybe like, I don't know, like 12 year olds are going to approach this, which is, oh, it's, it's AI God. It knows everything. It, it knows the answers to the universe. We just, we did it. We did it. We, we developed Terminator God. God. No, obviously not, and that's hyperbole, but what I am saying is that it's a lot like interacting with Google search. We've known for years now, right? When you search something on Google search, you ask a question, not every result that it pops up is going to be 100% reliable. It's not going to be 100% precise. Maybe we don't have the answers yet, but it generally as a tool points you in the right direction or points you in the direction where you could answer your question. So just as you can find unreliable information on the internet using Google search, you can find unreliable information from this AI, or you can receive 
the information from this AI that's maybe unreliable. That's how I think of it anyways. We went over some of the capabilities you can use this for. Hopefully this gets a general idea of how you could use this in your life. Um, not just as a designer, not just as an artist, but as a human being, as a person. Maybe you want to use a more advanced or more narrowed down version of Google. I guess that's essentially what this is in a way and and forms and tutorials and everything like that so it's really really cool yeah it can even be used to generate scripts uh music lyrics and when i said music i meant like guitar tab stuff like that uh, but a lot of them are pretty hilariously bad so yeah it's a first step and there's a lot of really great uses for this already for me as an independent artist i'm not really as scared of this as i am excited about it because there's a lot of cool things you can do with it but ai art on the other hand that for me i'm not super stoked about it. but anyways let me know in the comments down below what you think of this and if there's any cool applications for chat gpt that you can think of leave those in the comments below i'd love to hear what you're using chat gpt for this is the future it's crazy if you would like to join a community built to support human artists of the future you can click the link in the description down below that's the bio lessons art community amidst this ai art revolution a lot of artists are afraid they will be kind of pushed to the fringes and drowned out by ai art because of how easy it is to make you know anybody in their toddler can generate images that look pretty good with it if you're a human artist you might be concerned, but I believe there's enough people out there that want to support human made art. We still admire, respect those skills. We still admire those people. That's what BioLessons art is all about, supporting human artists. So if that's something you're interested in, click the link in the description below to join. I'm Jordan Needham, this has been JHAM3D, and I'll catch you next time.